This is the year of new beginnings. You're going to begin again. You're going to run again. You're going to dance before the Lord again. The joy of the Lord is going to be your strength. You're going to have joy and speak of a full of glory. Because the paradigm shift is going to take place within your life, your spiritual life, your financial life. Because God's raising up a Joseph company. Men and women whose hearts are pure, God's raising up a generation of Josephs, a Joseph generation. The biggest transfer of wealth in the history of mankind has begun. People of God are going to receive more money than they ever received in the 2,000 years of the church. We now, have, we now stand at the threshold of the greatest transfer of wealth because we are like the children of Israel. Before they left Egypt, God gave them the wealth of Egypt. We are leaving. We're going home. And God's going to give us the wealth of nations in this hour because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And the blessings of God maketh rich. The blessings of God maketh rich. It's not like bedtime or this too late. Things going to fall apart. Let everything fall apart. Everything fell apart in Egypt. But during that time when God was judging Egypt, he was blessing his people. God is going to bless us. God is going to visit us. And God is going to transfer the wealth of the wicked to us. Because we have a work to be done. We have an assignment that we must accomplish. And we need money. And a lot of money. And God's got a lot of money. And it's in the hands of the wicked. We're going to go get it. Hallelujah. How many of you are going to go for me and get the money? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The anointing to spoil. God's going to give you right now in the name of Jesus. The anointing to spoil. Those on television or video. The anointing to spoil is coming upon you right now in the name of Jesus. I release that anointing upon you. The year of the greatest transfer of wealth has come. And I declare it, this is your year of vindication. You will be vindicated. You will be blessed beyond measure. And it's going to be supernatural, supernatural transfer of wealth into your bank account. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Paradigm shifts in the political world. Paradigm shifts in the kingdom of God. That's why I want you to get excited. We're going to talk about now the paradigm shifts in the world. But don't worry about the world. God is in control of the world. God is in control of what's going on in the United Nations Security Council. God is in control of the affairs of men. And he is in control of your life. He is the blessed control of everything in your life. I'll speak about the paradigm shifts that are going to take place in the world. President Donald Trump made a declaration that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. That was a marker in time. That was a signpost. That was a defining moment for this decade. In the last 2,000 years, Jerusalem was never, in the last 2,000 years, the capital of the Jewish people. It was a defining moment. Why? Because all the nations of the world are against it. The United Nations, the Security Council, the African bloc of nations, the Asian bloc of nations, the European bloc of nations, every nation except a few Pacific islands are standing with us. The rest are not standing with us. They are standing with the Arab people. They are saying, God, forget about what you say. We don't accept what you say. We don't recognize you as the God that created the universe. Our collective decision is the only decision that you, God, must obey. Because we have spoken at the United Nations immediately after Donald Trump made that declaration. 
the Security Council got together to nullify it. The General Assembly of the United Nations nullified that declaration. The, I know it's against this. The nations of the world said no. You're wrong. You should never do that. After 70 years of the Jews in Babylon, after the Holocaust in Jerusalem 2,500 years ago, and all the Jews that were left were taken to Babylon, and Jerusalem was destroyed. After that Holocaust 2,500 years ago, God raised up a man called Cyrus. And Cyrus made a decree that Jerusalem was the capital of the Jewish people. And they must go back and build the temple again, the second temple. The first temple was built by Solomon, 1000 BC. In 530, the second temple was built because of a man called Cyrus. And Cyrus was the head of a superpower. It was the superpower that controlled the known world. And as a superpower, he declared that Israel has a right to Jerusalem and has a right to build the second temple. Now, 2,500 years later, the president of the United States makes the same decree that the Jews have the right to Jerusalem and the right to build their temple. Because that's the next thing that's going to happen on the prophetic calendar, on the messianic calendar, is the recognition of Jerusalem by a superpower, Cyrus, the new Cyrus, 2,500 years ago. It happened and it's happening again. Because every prophetic event, every prophetic fulfillment is by historical precedent. There is no fulfillment of prophecy without a precedent. The types and shadows. That's why Donald Trump is the Cyrus of today. And the United States is going to be blessed because we stand with the president's decision. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. Because of this declaration, we said we are one nation under God. Not under the United Nations. I call it the United Nothing. Not under the United Nothing, but under God. Donald Trump did not make Jerusalem the capital of the Jewish people. God made Jerusalem the capital of the Jewish people. And he said, I'll put my name here forever. And he gave it to David. It's called the city of David. Yerushalayim means the, the foundation of peace. There will not be peace on earth until there's peace in Jerusalem. That's why the scripture says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper that pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Isaiah 50, 62 Five to seven. It says these words. God has raised up a watchman among the nations. That will not rest until God makes Yerushalayim a praise on the earth. There is a mighty company of people on the earth all over the world that are praying for Jerusalem. Because God has put it in their hearts. God has anointed them to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Because God says, don't make me rest until I make Jerusalem a praise on the earth. That's our calling in this hour. That is why we're in this great nation. Because the battle for Jerusalem has just begun. And it's the final battle on earth. It is ground zero in the end of time. It is the epic center of the global conflict. That will result in the battle of Armageddon. In the book of Zechariah chapter 12. 
It says these words. And in that day, I'll make Jerusalem troublesome storm for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. This is a message to the United Nations. This is a message to the Security Council. This is a message to all the nations of the world. We're standing on the right side. We're standing on God's side here in America. The, all the people of the earth be gathered together against it in the Security Council, in the General Assembly of the United Nations. Though they gather together against the resolution, the declaration of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. It was not Donald Trump's decision. In 1995, the Congress passed the Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1975. 1995, sorry. And for 20 years, every president did not act upon it. But I tell you what, the time had come, and the time is now. Now all those who are concerning themselves with it, this is what God says, he's going to judge them. That's why I believe America is going to be blessed. That is, in the next few years, America is going to rise up. America is going to be blessed. I'm talking about amazing blessings. I'm talking about America being raised up, not by Donald Trump's policies. I'm talking about God Almighty pouring his blessings upon America because he said it, and I believe it, and he's going to do it because he's a covenant-keeping God. He keeps his word. America is going to be blessed because we are now positioning ourselves to say we stand alone against the nations of the world for Israel. I mean, it doesn't mean that we are the only ones standing up with Israel. There are many in every nation around the globe that are being raised up by God to pray for Israel, to stand with Israel. I, uh, I'm in discussion right now with a group of pastors in Western Papua, Papua, that is part of Indonesia. And these Indonesian pastors want me to go there to have the biggest pro-Jerusalem rally in the most populous Islamic country in the world. So I asked them, I said, do you guys know what you're doing? <laughs> I said, look. I said to them, look, I don't know whether this is a good idea. They say, okay. We want to come to your church in February to share our heart with the people to bless Israel in Papua, in Western Papua, and give Israel land. And bless them and do whatever it is, or gold or silver or everything. We wanted to go to Israel and bless Israel. And I'm like, do you understand that this is treason in the Muslim country? They said, we don't care. Yeah. We know we're going to stand with the Holy One of Israel, irregardless of the most uh, powerful Islamic country in the world. We will stand with what God says. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. How many of you are ready to stand yeah. with what God says? And those guys are fixing to come here. They say, send us an invitation. We are ready to come. We want your, you want your fellowship to know we're here. We're part of the great move of God. And we're ready to stand up. We're ready to die. To do what God said. We're living in an exciting time because God's raising people recklessly abandoned to the Lord. Recklessly abandoned to the Lord. Jerusalem shall be the Stone of trembling. What is Jerusalem? A defining issue. Defines the future of every person. Defines the future of the church. Because the majority of the church are against Israel. It's called replacement theology. They say Jesus re rejected them when he cried over Jerusalem. He abandoned them. He doesn't like them. He hates them. And Jerusalem... No longer belongs to them. Now my Bible 
says God is a covenant keeping God, he doesn't break any of his covenant. But the church today, the World Council of Churches, the Vatican, they are all against Israel receiving their capital city. As if the world has to give it to them. God gave it to them. They don't need the nations. They don't need the World Council of Churches. They don't need the Vatican to tell them. God has already spoken. That's all that matters. This issue is going to lead to the biggest confrontation ever since creation. Daniel chapter 12 speaks about that. The question is, what, where do we go from here? What's going to happen? Because of this declaration, what's going to happen? As I read this message, I'm going to talk about what's going to happen. What's going to happen? Now that the United States of America, like Cyrus of old, have confirmed what God said and stands with the children of Israel, you're talking about what are the next prophetic events? Are we, living in a protect, protect, are we living in a prophetic season? Yes. Are these things the things that Daniel spoke about? Yes. Are these the things that Ezekiel spoke about? Yes. These are the last days. And this declaration of Jerusalem as the capital of, of Israel is the beginning of the final showdown on earth. The shockwaves of that declaration are going through the, out the whole world. In every capital, they're mad. And there is a preparation for a confrontation. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. And he said unto them, nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. That's what we are seeing right now. Because... This issue is has divided the nations. And the Arab nations are ready to take Jerusalem by force. And the nations of the world are ready to help them because they don't believe that Israel has a right to Jerusalem. In 1980, the Knesset, passed the law called the Jerusalem Law. And in the Jerusalem Law, they made Jerusalem the capital of Israel in 1980. And in 1995, the Congress of the United States of America confirmed Jerusalem undivided as the capital of the Jewish people. They confirmed the decision by the Knesset that Jerusalem was and will always be the capital of the Jewish people. Now, because of that, there's, there's going to be talk of wars and rumors of wars. The question is, who is going to do that? Who is going to be? Because this is, why am I saying this? Because that's where we are going politically. That's where we are. We are now at the threshold of the biggest war that's going to define the final status of Jerusalem. The declaration by the United States signals the beginning of the final showdown between the nations of the world over the issue of Jerusalem. The talk of wars and rumors of wars has now begun because there's no way out because America is not going to capitulate and say, no, we made a mistake. Um, okay. The, the, Jerusalem belongs to the Palestinians. They are not going to do that. And the nations of the world are not going to accept it. Now we are on a coalition course right now. Because the world against Israel and America. We, the, the European bloc of nations, they are against the decision. The, the Asian bloc of nations, they are against it. The Arab League of Nations, against it. The African League of Nations, against it. So it's America and Israel. And there is now talk of all right, we will go for an all-out war. Because nobody is willing to surrender. Nobody is willing to negotiate. The United Nations Security Council is not ready to negotiate. 
the General Assembly of the United Nations is not ready to negotiate because they already made a resolution to nullify that declaration. They already made a resolution to nullify the Jerusalem law. So they're like, either you surrender to the will of the world, the United Nations, the Security Council. If you don't, we're coming by force to enforce our resolution. What's the next thing? The enforcement of the United Nations resolutions to remove the Jews from Jerusalem and confine them maybe to East Jerusalem. And who is going to come to, to their aid? America is going to have to stand up and fight for their declaration. That's why now we stand at the point of no return. Now we are in the final showdown between the nations. And we, the people of God, are going to be right in it, praying through, standing up for what is right, because only those who stand with God will survive this war. And this war is the next prophetic event that is imminent. I'm talking about imminent. We have now, we, we have now ended the final showdown, the decade of destiny, the biggest confrontation between the nations of the world. And this is what, who is going to go to war? I'm going to give you right now. Who is going to war and who is going to stand with the Palestinians and who is going to stand with the Israelis? And they, have and they have said, come let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more rem in remembrance. Let us destroy and wipe out Israel. Because Israel won't listen to the United Nations Security Council. They've made so many resolutions against them. And still they don't listen. Now they have America supporting them. And America won't listen. Who are they? The Bible is talking about. The war that's coming was predicted. Let me say to you, this war is not the battle of Armageddon. This war is not the Great Tribulation. This war is not any of the things you think of. This war is a war about the reduction of global population in order to comply with Agenda 21 of the United Nations and the creation of the New World Order. What is this war about? It's Jerusalem creates a platform, creates a reason for the confrontation. But that confrontation is for one purpose, that is to create the New World Order. Because the League of Nations was made out of the First World War. The United Nations was made out of the Second World War. The New World Order is going to be born out of the Third World War. And who is going to in initiate the Third World War? It's right here in Scripture. We have details of what's going to happen, how it's going to happen. Our Father loves us so much that he has given us headlines of tomorrow. He has given us the signposts of where we are. Where are we? We are now going towards the Third World War. Why? Because of Jerusalem. Why? Because the scripture says Jerusalem shall be the, the stone of trembling, trembling. It shall be a burdensome stone. It shall break nations. And right here it talks about a federation. For they have consulted together with one, another, with, with one concern. They are confederate against Israel, against thee, the tabernacle of Edom, and Ishmaelites, of Moab, of the Haganites, of Cabel, of Ammon, of Amalek, the Philistines, with their inhabitants of Tyre, and Asher also joining them to help the children of Lot. Those nations that are mentioned there are the Shiites in the region. They are all mentioned, and they include Turkey, Iran, and all the Shiite nations in the region. They are not going to accept the American decision to stand with Israel. They are going to go to war, a confederate, an alliance. They've created an alliance 
for one purpose, that is to destroy Jerusalem as the capital of the Jewish people. Where are we? We are at the threshold of the Third World War. And the Third World War is going to be the nation's attempt to nullify this declaration by America. Now, I'm answering one simple question. What is the next big thing on the prophetic calendar? What should we expect? What would happen? Well, will the war be fought only in the Middle East? Or will that war go global and nuclear? Those questions are answered by scripture right here. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosened and were prepared for an hour and a day and a, mo and a month and a year. For to slay the third of mankind, of men. Now, listen to me carefully now. The Shiite nations, all of them surround the Euphrates River. And the Bible is saying they are going to rise up to confront the United States of America and Israel in an all-out war. What are they planning in, in all the Shiite cities and nations? They are planning for a final showdown. Who is going to support them? They're going to go to war to support the resolutions that have been made by the Security Council, by the General Assembly of the United Nations. They are justified in going to war because the United Nations and the Security Council is backing them. Because the Security Council and the General Assembly has nullified that declaration of Jerusalem being the capital of Israel. That means that the line has been drawn in the sand. And everybody is ready. And this is the battle. This is the war that the Bible talks about. It's not the war of Armageddon. This is a war that will last for one hour. One day, one hour. This is not the end of the world. This is not luck. The end of all things. This is just one hour. It's going to be nuclear. They're going to go nuclear, and all the, the major cities in America, the coastal cities, a whole lot of them are going to go up in flames. We're going to wake up one day, and the East Coast will be gone, and the West Coast will be gone. We're going to see a nuclear holocaust that's going to last one hour, and it'll be over. Because those angels are being released right now because of the declaration we just made. You say, well, should we have made that declaration? Of course. Why? Because that's what God wants. Now, will you say, why, why would God allow that? Doesn't he know that they, they are going to go to war? Of course he knows that. He said they will go to war. He knows who's going to win. I believe this war the Bible tells us that Israel is going to win because Israel is going to go nuclear. When they go nuclear, they're going to use all their nuclear warheads on all these people and these nations. And we're going to go nuclear on the Russians and the Chinese because they're all going to join in. Everybody's going to be in on this one hour. So it's going to be a nuclear exchange that to wipe out two billion people. And at the end of that, we're going to come together and say, okay, what are we doing? Let's start the new world order. That's when the Antichrist I've been telling you is going to take control of the ten regions. And the ten regions already been defined by the United Nations. 
The United Nations has already divided the whole world into 10 regions. And those 10 regions are going to be the way they're going to control every person in Agenda 21. That means everything that needs to be done is in place. Agenda 21, the division of the world into 10 regions, already in place in order to have the 10 kings under the Antichrist, immediately after the one-hour war. Will we know the Antichrist? He's alive and well today. Is he preparing for this? Yes. Does he know this coming? Yes. There is an all-out preparation for a nuclear holocaust. Will somebody shout amen? amen? I mean, that's what the scripture says. Where are we going? We are going towards a nuclear holocaust that will last for an hour. And one-third of mankind will die. Cities in America, cities in Russia, cities in China, cities in the Middle East, they're all going to go. Two thir one third of mankind, one, two thirds will remain. And they are the ones that will be ushered into the new world order. What is the new world order? It's the one government, because they no longer want to have another nuclear war. It's like no more nuclear war. All warheads must be brought under the control of one global government. Because what has just happened in one hour of killing two billion people, it, we can't allow this to happen again. So what do we need to do now? We need to create the new world order. Immediately after the First World War, they say, let's create the League of Nations. And it failed. Then they, after Second World War, they say, let's create the United Nations. This time, it's going to go nuclear. And this time, they're going to set up a one world government, one world religion, one world currency, one world personal identification number, PIN. That number is going to be based upon 666. And the Antichrist will be in charge of the 10 regions that have already been created by the General Assembly of the United Nations. How close are we? Closer than we have ever been. How excited are we? <laughs> we, we, we know where we're going. We know who's with, uh, with us. We know who's going to protect us. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. You got to memorize that psalm. He who dwells under the shadow of the Almighty. Woo! Glory. That's where we're going to be. Angels on assignment. That's the hour that we're in. The final showdown on earth. The end of time. The end of days upon us. How should you begin this year, 2018? I mean, at the beginning of 2018, just on December the 6th, the president of the United States drew a line and said, now we're crossing over. There's no going back. We've gone beyond the point of no return to the final confrontation. Now, it's a call to you and me to know that we have very little time to get the king's job done and done quickly. If you're going to live for God, it's now. If you're going to work for God, it's now. There is no more time to waste because this war is going to be a big surprise it's going to happen so fast. In one hour, it's over. It'll be too late. That is why I invite you now to close your eyes. 